Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to review the Bosto 16 HD pen display. This is a review unit that I received from TomTop, an online retailer that sells a lot of electronics and other consumer products. Having said that, this is not a paid review. By the way, this video may be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. The link will be in the video description below. Let's take a look at the packaging first. I like this packaging mostly because they listed all the features. Not just that, they also explain what the features are for, what they mean and what you can do with them. So it's actually quite informative. Bosto is a company based in China and on this packaging they actually say this product was designed in South Korea and made in China. This is very nice. This looks like a slip case. Yes, it is. And this is the pen display. By the way, I have already unboxed the whole thing. I'm recreating this unboxing for you guys to see how the packaging is like. In the original um, package, this was actually in a plastic sleeve for extra protection. And this stand that's included was also in a plastic sleeve for well, protection. We have two boxes, one for cables and one for all the little accessories, the pen and the stand. Quick start guide, microfiber cleaning cloth, an artist glove, 20 replacement nibs, that's really generous. And on this 16 gigabytes, drive we have the Mac and Windows driver this is the pen the build quality is solid it has a nice width to it it's not powered by battery so you don't have to charge it there are two side buttons the clicks are very firm and this rubber grip is huge this pen supports slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity the pen stand allows you to rest the pen vertically or horizontally and on the back that's the nib remover. You can actually open this but it's empty inside. One thing I don't like about this is there's no rubber here so this may slide around on the table. This is the only cable included. It's actually two cables that's fused into one. On one side we have full size HDMI and USB for data and power. On the other side that goes to the pen display, we have this USB-C looking like connector and micro HDMI, if I'm not wrong. This is the plastic stand included. There are pieces of rubber here, here and here. And these are the two pieces of latch that you can rest the pen display on. You have to pop open this surface to raise this up. And on the back, we have more pieces of rubber as well. These are the shiny uh, type, which means the grip is excellent. There are two pieces of metal here. These two pieces are at different heights, so you can rest the surface here. This is the highest angle, and this is the lowest angle. So this is the Bosto 16 HD. A pen display, by the way, is actually a monitor. So you do have to connect it to a computer using the cable provided before you can use it. So even though this is very thin, almost like a laptop, this is not a tablet, this is not a computer. This is a monitor that you can draw on. And for the Bosto 16 HD, it uses a 15.6 inch IPS panel. At the corner here we have the protective film for the matte screen protector that's beneath. You're supposed to peel off the protective film and not the matte screen protector. You're just supposed to peel off one piece not two pieces. So this is how the matte surface looks and it has a very nice texture. The design looks good, it looks simple and clean. Bezels are a bit thick but functional so that you can rest your palm on the display. Build quality seems to be quite solid. 
there are some dots here at the top. These dots are actually for the physical shortcut buttons which goes on the top here for the 16HDK model minus the 16HD so it doesn't come with those buttons but the dots are still here. There are no rubber feet on the back so you're supposed to use this together with the stand otherwise if you use this on the table it's going to scratch the back. And on the side here these are the OSD buttons and these two are for the cables. I've just connected the pen display to my laptop that's running Windows 10 and my laptop's USB port is able to provide enough power to power the pen display. When I power on the pen display for the first time, I noticed the colors and brightness, they were not that fantastic. That could be because of the display itself or it could be because of the aggressive matte screen protector. Anyway, I tried to calibrate this display three times and let me show you the color support. I measured only 59% sRGB, 42% NTSC, 44% Adobe RGB and 43% P3. I have also color calibrated the display on Mac OS and results are the same so unfortunately the colors they are just not as vibrant as I would expect. The maximum brightness was measured at 153 nits which is not that bright but for indoor use it's still adequate. Viewing angles are alright as long as there is no light source reflecting on the display. The only display settings you can change with the OSD menu are backlight, brightness, contrast, sharpness, and color temperature. The 1080p resolution is sufficient for a 15.6 inch display like this. It's a very usable resolution despite the slight pixelation. The only thing that I'm disappointed is the colors. I mean, this is an IPS panel for some reason. The colors uh, don't really reflect that. Let's see what you can do with the driver. Let me bring your attention to this part here. Touch screen status. There is actually another model called 16HDT that features a touch screen. All right, let's continue. So this is where you can adjust the pressure sensitivity using the slider here. And you can also Customize the two side buttons to mouse clicks or specific keyboard shortcuts. Since this display doesn't have any physical shortcut buttons, I am not able to customize all this. And because there is no touch, I am not able to customize all this as well. This is calibration. This display is not laminated, so there is actually a small gap between the drawing surface and the LCD beneath and also there was some misalignment with the cursor and the pen tip so I had to calibrate it. The lack of a laminated display is not a very big deal because the gap isn't that big and after calibration I was able to remove the misalignment and any parallax. Let me show you some line performance. This is Photoshop CC. So the lines are able to taper quite nicely. Transition from thin to thick is quite smooth. There is however some input lag with Photoshop on Windows. The pen is quite sensitive. Initial activation force is very light so you can draw very light to get a very thin line. Drawing performance is more responsive on Medibank Paint Pro compared to Photoshop. The line quality is fantastic. Pressure sensitivity works really well. The pen is quite accurate after calibration. And I am able to maintain consistent pressure. So the thickness of the lines, they don't wobble. I can place dots on the canvas very easily by tapping. Overall drawing performance is very satisfactory. The lines they come out just the way I expect them to. This is Clip Studio Paint. It works great. 
This is a self-portrait. My hair, it's getting really long. Even though there is a matte screen protector, I still feel like the screen is a bit smooth. But at least there is no irritating squeaky sound. Getting used to the screen protector shouldn't be a problem. In fact, as I'm drawing right now, it feels, it feels alright. I should be able to get used to the screen protector very quickly. Minibank Paint Pro on the Mac. For some reason, I just can't produce any lines when drawing with a pen. The pen is actually working because when I click the side buttons, they work. And when I draw with the mouse, I can produce lines. But when I draw with the pen, there are no lines. The pen display doesn't feel warm even after hours of use, so that's fantastic. Alright, to conclude, let me just go through the pros and cons. Things I like, the design, it looks good, build quality is solid, drawing performance is fantastic for most of the drawing apps that I have tested on Mac and Windows, except for Photoshop on Windows, which is less responsive compared to other drawing apps, and on Mac OS, for some reason, Midibank Paint Pro just doesn't produce any lines with the pen, even though the pen is working. For the cons, things that could be better, obviously colors and brightness could be better. The anti-glare of the matte screen protector, it's a bit aggressive, but I guess if you are looking at the display straight on like this, it shouldn't be a problem. Those dots there at the top, they shouldn't be there because for this particular model, the 16 HD, it doesn't come with the express keys at the top and the scroll wheel on the side. Personally, for me, it's not a big deal because I prefer keyboard shortcuts. Anyway, if you need those express keys, you can go for the 16HDK model, K for keys, or if you need finger gestures, you can go for the 16HDT, T for touch. In terms of value for money, the pricing for the Bosto 16 HD, it's quite competitive compared to other brands. Anyway, you can look for discounts on tomtop.com as well as on Bosto's website. Maybe you can find this pen display at a lower price. All right, I hope this review is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.